A great way in PLM360 of increasing productivity and reducing the risk of error is by using a filtered pick list. This allows an administrator to easily configure and limit valid choices in a pull down pick list based upon previous choices made in another pick list. For users, this means faster input of information and less risk of making an incorrect or irrelevant choice which could potentially lead to very costly downstream errors. The example you see here is of someone selecting a particular category of electrical component and, depending on the category selected, they are limited to choosing only relevant subcategories. So let's take a look at how filtered pick lists are actually set up. The information about the various electrical components is contained in an Excel spreadsheet, as you can see here. It's just a simple two-column spreadsheet with every individual subcategory on column two and each one's corresponding category name in column one. There are also titles for each column. It is the information in this spreadsheet which will be imported into PLM360 to form our filtered pick list. The first task is to create a new workspace which will be solely used as a placeholder for the electrical component information. So we create the workspace in the usual way, giving it a relevant name and also a description if we want to. This just needs to be a basic workspace with no workflow or revisioning. Once created, we then need to add some fields which represent the columns in our spreadsheet. To do this, we first create a section, which we can call whatever we choose. In this case, I'm just naming it details. We can then add, add our fields. We need two in this case, as we know there are two columns in the spreadsheet. So we create a field for each column using the same name as the column name in the spreadsheet. Therefore, one of these we will call category and the other we will call subcategory. The data type for both will be a single line of text. And we also need to specify our field length and display width, which controls the display of these input fields, which the user will eventually see. Finally, using PLM360's simple drag and drop customization tool, we place our fields in the details section we previously created. Remembering to save our layout, the workspace is now complete. Using our administration tools, we've now moved our new workspace to the engineering category and we can now select it. As with all new workspaces, we also need to set up access by defining a new role associated with it, giving read-write privileges and typical workspace permissions to all relevant groups. I'm not showing this here as the Wikihelp video called Adding Users and Setting Up Groups already outlines this fully. So our workspace has been created, but does not yet contain any data. The next step is to populate the workspace by importing our spreadsheet. All we need to do is specify the new workspace we have just created. The import type, in this case the type item details. And also the spreadsheet, which is currently on a local folder. We give the import a name and the process is started. PLM360 provides a very powerful and easy to use capability for importing data from an Excel spreadsheet. This example contains around 640 lines of information, but we can import spreadsheets containing many thousands if we need to. Here we see the information which is being imported. Once we have verified the import, we then save, press the run command and select proceed to commit the import. For more details of how to do this, the Wikihelp video Importing Items into PLM360 gives a step-by-step -step guide. Now, when we return to our electrical component list workspace, we can see the result of our import. This workspace has become our placeholder for this data which we can refer to whenever we want to create a filtered pick list of electrical components. 
So let's now complete the picture by showing how we create an actual filtered pick list in another workspace, which a user of that workspace will be able to select. In this case, we have a workspace which is used to manage the RFQ process for sourcing electrical components. And this is an ideal place to use our new filtered pick list. We select where we want to add our new field, in this case the sourcing tab, and we then need to create a field for the first column of our imported data, again called category in this case. The data type will be a pick list, and for this first field, we'll create a new pick list. We give it a name and associate it with the list of records in our previously created electrical component list workspace, remembering to save it. We then need to associate this field with the corresponding field on our imported data. We select Filtered Type and then Save. Obviously we need two different fields in this particular case, so we need to carry out the same procedure for our second field, which will be called Subcategory. We select our newly created pick list, Again, make sure that our options are set to Filtered Type, and then Save. As before, a simple drag and drop of those fields into our Sourcing tab completes the process. So you can see, once we have our workspace containing the imported spreadsheet data, it's very quick and very easy to add a corresponding filtered pick list in any relevant workspace. So there you have filtered pick lists, a way to help users be more efficient and to reduce the risk of downstream errors by limiting the selection options to only those relevant for previously selected criteria.